first keep my children safe and then also having to stay away from my grandmother to keep her safe because um, at the time when COVID hit she was at home out in Simnasho and so that was kind of the initial like um, impact when it first happened and then um, and then I was impacted as an employee um, and then that also impacted then my family because I'm a single mother and so my kids were at home but I was at work and I was um, kind of I was the support system to Caroline in the health and human services and so I was one of the ones um, starting to order supplies and um, help her get stuff situated so that if we did get to come back to work and then also what did that look like when we were having people stay home and what do those practices look like and how are we going to bring people back and talking about those things and so um, I think my my hours really increased um, I know for a lot of people it decreased but my hours really increased and um, luckily my aunt was staying with me at the time and so I had childcare so childcare wasn't a barrier for me but it did take me away from my kids because sometimes I was in the office as early as seven when Caroline was getting there so that we could start you know because some of the places we were ordering from was from the East Coast so they were already open a few hours and so trying to get a get ahead of other people and um, because everything you know I was on the phone for hours at times trying to get thermometers trying to get masks trying to get hand sanitizer um, and and then also making sure that we're watching what CDC is putting out and and making sure that we're getting information to um, KWSO so our staff knows what's going on for our community so they know what's going on um, and then you know the COVID team got structured and then having to make sure that that communication was happening and I don't think I really felt the impacts until I got into graduate school but being a student myself so not only trying to work with my kids because they're in CASA and they're, they continue to be in CASA and they'll probably be in CASA through the rest of this year just because of their immune systems. But so on top of having two kids in the K-12 system, I'm also, I was ending my bachelor's program when it hit and then going into graduate school and making, trying to make that decision <laughs> as, you know, a single mother, full-time staff, and just you know um, my kids are pretty active they were ballet football um, now cheerleading so there's you know they're pretty busy um, and so trying to make that best decision to whether to go on to graduate school um, and so now that's a big impact because all of my graduate studies are online and that's been like super difficult um, I think one benefit is that I don't have to travel up there every other week because that's what would re be required of me. But so like in one instance, there's some, some silver linings, but then in another, it's really hard to do online learning. And I know myself enough to know that if I'm in a hybrid where it's 30% online and the rest is in the classroom, I can function in that. But all online was really hard. And so, so I think it's much easier for me um, when I think of like what my kids are going through as I'm going through school and doing 100% online and they're going through school and doing 100% online, it's really, um, which is why um, a lot of the times I, I look to my kids and really try to focus on social emotional for them as they're going through their, their schooling um, because I know what I'm going through as an adult. And so really being able to understand kind of what they're going through and the impacts that this is having on them um, in their little lives of not being able to go to dance and see their friends and not be able to go see grandma and I remember one time we went up to see grandma for um, just to see her it was probably about a month in and so we called up and we said we're gonna come up and we're gonna do a drive-by and it was so sad like to my grandma was out the window and she was waving at us and I was I wanted to cry because I'm like we can't hug her we can't you know we can see her we know she's okay but that's still not the same and so it was really it was um, I think for me just a you know not not that I've ever taken my grandmother for granted but it just was really a moment where I was like wow like we really got to do our work on our side to keep her safe
you know, I think it really hit with people in our community when we lost our first person, you know, and that what that that was um, I think really big for for our community because in, in our community one loss is a huge loss and so when we look at how many people we've lost and not just to COVID all the losses and combined it's a lot for our community to be dealing with and you know there's not unfortunately because of COVID there's not a lot of resources we can offer to 100 percent help people through the grieving process to talk about these things to be in space and be in community and to to just love one another during this time and it's really difficult to to do that in these times right now and um so you know our community is really hurting and i think you know um that's probably as a community as a whole i think we've all been impacted by the losses in our community and and that would be the one that's probably for me um, and just the work that I do, that's probably the one that's sticking with me the most is in these times we don't have, we, we can't function in the way that we used to be able to when we lost somebody. You know, we don't have the days that we can, you know, spread out that grieving process over the days and then, and then you know, take that time. You know, we're, we're having to rush through these, through our, our um, funerals and not being able to, you know, um, kind of tap into our traditions and our cultures to be able to grieve and process through the losses that we're, we're dealing with. And so I think that's probably the biggest one that sticks with me. Um, and I, I think I'll just leave it at that, that, you know, that's probably, I don't know, I said a lot, so, um, but I think COVID has impacted um, all of us in, in, you know, similar ways, but also we've also all been impacted in our own unique ways as well as individuals and families. I think the world really was like, you all need to stop, <laughs> you know, stop and take a breath and look around and, you know, the, the cliche of smell the, the roses, you know, that, that comes to my mind because it really did. It really stopped the world for even just for a minute. And so, you know, I think um, sometimes we're just on a go, 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 and we never stop to really think about what's happening beyond sometimes our own lives. And so I think it really, really kind of, it, it's like, you know, when you slam on the brakes and it's like a jolt, like that's, you know, um, what it kind of felt like. Um, I know for me, because I'm always on the go, that's what it did for me. Um, and really kind of put life in perspective um, of, you know, like we're not promised every day you know, we're not we're not guaranteed that if we're going to go out and get groceries at Safeway that we aren't going to get sick. You know, there's just no guarantees to life. And so I think that's what, you know, it, it, for me, um, it really did. Um, and it, it allowed me to slow down for a minute and 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 look at things a little different and and give me um, another perspective on life. And um, moving forward, I'm trying to do a better job of not being that go, 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 go. And that's really hard for me, but that's, that's what this pandemic did.